Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, Case 76. We have a great case here. We have a axial radiograph of the shoulder. And the question that I have is, the findings shown should fuse at what age? 15 years of age, 20 years of age, 25 years of age, or 30 years of age? The findings sh shown should fuse at what age? Well, if we take a look, this is an axial radiograph of the shoulder, a great look at the glenohumeral joint. This is the glenoid here. This is the humeral head. We can also see the coracoid process here. We can see the distal clavicle articulating with the acromion at the acromioclavicular joint. Now notice the acromion is somewhat funny, right? It's broken into two different pieces. There's, there's a lucent cleft here that's dividing the acromion in two pieces, an anterior portion and a posterior portion, right? There's a lucent cleft here. This should all be one bone, but it looks like the acromion is two bones. This is known as an os acromiali, right? An accessory ossification center of the acromion. This should normally fuse at 25 years of age, okay? So it should normally fuse at 25 years of age. If the patient is 30 or 35 or 40, we would call this an os acromiali, an os acromiali. If the patient is 15 years of age and has this that's just a normal variant, right? So this is an osacromiali. It's an unfused acromial apophysis in the normal population. But once you're 25 years of age, it becomes an osacromiali, okay? Now, we don't want to call it an osacromiali in the pediatric population in any patient that's under 25 years of age. This is, again, best seen on an axillary radiograph, as I showed you in this index case. It can also be best seen on an axial CT image or an axial MRI exam as well, right? That's what we typically look for in osochromiality. And is the osochromiality important? Do we care about it? Well, yes, because it can be stable and it can be unstable, right? So this is best seen on cross-sectional imaging, like an MRI, right? An MRI can show and document if the lesion is stable or if it's unstable. And what do we look for to look for an unstable osochromiality? Well, this is an axial T2 Fat sat image through the shoulder. We're at a superior slice. And notice, first of all, this is the clavicle and this is the acromion. And there's an os acromiali because the acromion is broken into two, look, two different bones, right? There's a cleft here, right? That And there's two bones here. And there's this articulation is known as a synchondrosis between the os acromiali. And notice that there is cystic change. There's some marrow edema, some cystic change, and there's even fluid here in the os acromiali, the synchondrosis. So this suggests mobility and this suggests instability. So we can say that this os acromiali is unstable. Now, the question then becomes, well, does this predispose to rotator cuff tears and subacromial impingement? Does this predispose to rotator cuff impingement? And traditionally, the thought was, yes, it did. But now more current research, research shows that this may not necessarily be the case. And in fact, this is controversial. Some authors suggest that yes, this does, an osochromiality does lead to early rotator cuff tears, subacromial impingement. But there are other authors that suggest that that's not the case anymore because they have evidence that in certain cohorts of patients, that patients that had osochromiality, it did not result in rotator cuff tears and subacromial impingement. So that's debatable, but we still often look at an MRI to suggest whether it's stable or unstable, and that's definitely an uh, important use of MRI. So nice example of osochromiali, best seen on axillary radiographs or axial CT or MRI images. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another amazing high-yield MSK unknown case.